Welcome to ILTV's Insider. I'm Aaron Porras, and Israel's fifth serial elections are quickly, quickly approaching. Come November, some six and a half million voters will be asked to choose parties for the next Knesset or parliament. And since the start of the campaign season, plenty has shifted. Political discourse getting more and more heated. Defense Minister Gantz and Justice Minister Saar have united their parties. The religious Zionism camp has divided and then re reunited. And of course, former Prime Minister Naftali Bennett retired from politics altogether, at least for now. But in spite of all the updates, the polls remain relatively unchanged and the division between left and right leaving very little hope for a stable outcome. So what can we expect then between now and the elections? Joining me to discuss is former U.S. diplomat and executive director of J Street Israel, Nadav Tamir. And here in studio, I have Boaz Bismuth, November, uh, number 27 on the Likud list for Knesset and former editor-in-chief of Israel Ayom. Thank you both so much for being with us. Thank you for inviting us. Thank you. All right, now, uh, I'm gonna start actually with, with you, Boaz. Yeah. How reliable do you think the polls even are? Uh, for example, I know anecdotally that there are pro-Netanyahu voters who in the polls will vote for other parties mm -hmm. in order to lull those voters into a sense of security. No, hopefully I believe that the votes, I mean, are not reflecting uh, the uh, support that the Likud party have uh, in those uh, coming elections in the fifth, the elections number five. It is true that one can see that the last four elections were kind of tough. And why was it tough? Because Israeli people, Israeli, I mean, population, Israeli civilians right now are very conservative. On the contrary, I mean, among Jewish uh, population in Israel, you would see a very strong conservative party. Only to give an example, when I started following politics or being involved uh, and bringing people, I mean, to vote, I wasn't even voting. I was 17 years old. In 1981, to be precise, Likud had 48 seats, uh, the Labour Party had 47. Likud Party still would be the number one uh, uh, party. Labour Party is, is fighting, struggling for five seats, maybe six seats, maybe even four seats only. So to express to you what? To express to you that I do believe that Likud will be strong again, will be the strongest party, but it has to be stronger this time in order to prevent election number six. A strong Likud will prevent us from election number six and a real serious conservative and, and, and good government. All right, so Nadav, I want to turn to you. You know, how, how do you respond also with the polls in mind? And do you think that we will be able to avoid six elections uh, given these current state of affairs uh, with Likud at around 33 seats? I can't really predict that. I don't think anyone can. Uh, it very much uh, depends on the vote of the Arab vote and other uh, sectors. But I can say that it's not really about left and right. And I'm saying it as someone who's on the left. Uh, in this um, uh, um, pro um, uh camp, it's definitely all right-wingers, but in the other camp that doesn't want Netanyahu to be prime minister, there are many right-wingers uh, who support, for example, the map that you have in your studio, which I think is the end of Zionism, because uh, it completely negates the need for a two-state solution. So I think those elections are not about left and right. It's more about identity people who believe in democracy and people who put um, Netanyahu and uh, Jewish supremacy uh, on top uh, than the other issues. Us? I'll try to stay polite and not say that, uh, our, uh, that Nadav is totally wrong. I would say that he's not very correct, and I'll explain. Look, I do believe that in Israel, it's a country, I mean, the Jewish state, I mean, it's also about ideology. Why are we here? So it's ideology. Now, the fact today that we're trying to do it, yes, Bibi, not Bibi, and take by ideology and throw it to the bin, that is, I mean, that is one of the, how would I say, the absurdity that we have reached in Israel 2022. Listen, I mean, the, the, the Jewish people, I mean, wow, the chosen people, people of culture, people of books, people, I mean, of Nobel Prizes, what have, been, what have we been reduced to in the elections? I mean, yes, Bibi, no, Bibi. No, it's not about that. Me, for example, when I joined politics, when I joined now the Likud party, I did it, I mean, I supported Begin, I supported Shabir, I support, I mean, it's not only a way of life. I mean, it's a belief. It's an ideology. The Likud party, with all due respect, it's also about, 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 about preventing a Palestinian state. It's about building, I mean, in Judea and Samaria, which is ours. It's about implementing the, Isra the Jewish, the, 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 the Israeli law over Judea and Samaria. I do believe it. Now, uh, Nadav speaks, and he's correct, in the, on the fact that on the other side, with the left today, you will, side, you will find right-wingers like uh, Gidon Tsar, like uh, 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 Lieberman, uh, uh, like uh, uh, Bennett, I mean, who joined them too. But these are people who took personal, personal, for personal reasons, I mean, took their ideology, and threw it to the well, well, but that, that said, yeah. I, I think that an argument can very easily be made to say that these members that, uh, of Knesset that you just listed made a compromise for the benefit of the, of the country 
to form a government. So of course. Is the Likud willing to make such a compromise I if would, again we get to a situation where we're in a, in a gridlock? I will, I will applaud what you said right now and I will say that I totally agree if in this year that we just had we would have seen improvement in every issue in our state. Economy, I mean, have you seen the prices? I mean, living of, uh, cost of living? Have you seen, I mean, on the contrary, well, I mean, have you seen, uh, the whole, second, But the whole second. world wait, went, wait, went wait, up. Wait. In so, the cost of living so in Israel is comparatively too easy when you say all the better. world that is, I mean, the worst. Well, I mean, we that had is, a pandemic. We just came excuse. out of a pandemic. That is a fatalist excuse. I will give you an example. You know, we had the Corona crisis. Is that true? So I mean, you could also just follow the Corona crisis and say, wow, it's a worldwide cr crisis. We can't do anything, or be the first one in the world to fight it back with the, with the with the vaccines. So as you can see, Prime Minister Netanyahu will be soon again Prime Minister. On the contrary, he doesn't have this, I mean, thing that, okay, it's a world crisis, then let's, deal, let's accept it. No, it's a world crisis, let's deal it better with other countries. And this is the solution that the Likud party will bring. Now, concerning the other side, I mean, the left, I mean, with right-wingers who join them, I mean, what have we seen this year? What have we seen this year? In every element, every issue, every issue of life, I mean, we went backwards. What, the uh, 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 deal with Iran, cost of living, uh, uh, PLO flags in Israeli universities, a cra cra uh, assassination murders in our Arabic uh, uh, society right now. I mean, they for flatter. They say that in this, I mean, they would be better than uh, 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 the, the right wing. In they have succeeded in nothing, totally nothing. So, so Nadav, uh, coming back to you. First of all, of course, with your response to to Boaz right now, but also the polls are predicting an all-time low Arab uh, voter turnout. How do you think that that's going to influence the the coming election? Sure. So first of all, um, responding to <clears throat> uh, Mr. Bismuth, uh, I don't think the Likud is about an ideology uh, anymore. I mean, it used to be, I was not on that side, but it used to be a revisionist party. Um, uh, there were many liberals um, who believed in equal rights. Uh, today, it's not anymore this kind of liberal party. It's a populist party. It's all about Netanyahu. Um, the results of the primaries are very much uh, in terms of who's good for Netanyahu and who's bad, and also who gets approval to be uh, interviewed, like uh, Mr. Bismuth, is because of the people that Netanyahu think are better for him. It's very much like the Republican Party that is not the Republican uh, Conservative Party anymore, it's Trump's party. Uh, so I don't think it is about ideology. If it were about ideology, first of all, you would see a much stronger left because the majority of Israelis support the two-state solution over any other outcome. The majority of Israelis support uh, transportation on Saturday and uh, um, marriage for gay people. It is not reflected in our politics because our politics became very much um, influenced by Netanyahu. And uh, the people that left Netanyahu from in the change government, um, you know, did it because they understood that Netanyahu is, cares about himself and not about the state of Israel. Now, I'm not crazy about this change government in terms of the Palestinian issue. I don't think they did enough. But I think on most of the issues uh, that uh, uh, Mr. Bismuth mentioned, they did much, much better. Uh, on the economy, there is a budget, there is a plan. It's true that there is international inflation uh, for different reasons, but actually um, the, the uh, GDP of Israel is improving, the economy is strong. I think that the treatment of the corona was not politicized as in the days of Netanyahu. I think that the environment for the first time became, became an issue. I love the fact that there were more women ministers in this government than ever before. Mm -hmm. And uh, on top of that, that we had an Arab party in Israeli coalition, which I think is critical. And that brings me to your last question about right. the Arab vote. Unfortunately, sure. the Arab vote is low because the, Ar the Arab uh, uh, citizens of Israel, the Palestinian Israelis, uh, don't see any hope. They yeah. don't see that anything is coming out of uh, their participation. Yeah. Um, they don't see any, any, uh, and that's why I believe that Lapid, Gantz, and others should really 
um, say out loud well, that the did... only future of Israeli democracy is with the well, Arab Nadav... population. Sure, sure. Boaz, go ahead. Now, only, only to say, to, I listened to Nadav, of course, and, uh, and Nadav and me, we want the same thing. We want a successful Israel. I mean, I do uh, agree. Yet, I mean, Nadav, I mean, you, you're interviewing me right now. I'm in uh, Rishon LeZion in Israel right now. I'm in the Jewish state, I believe, yeah, to correct me if I'm wrong, I'm in the Jewish state. And you're talking to me again about, for five times, I think I counted five times, the Arab vote, the Arab vote, the Arab vote. With all due respect, I mean, I do not wish, I mean, in Israel, I mean, uh, to have uh, the, Arabic, the Arab brotherhood, the Islamic brotherhood, I mean, this is Ram, the Islamic brotherhood, not only participating in the coalition, but to be, they, they, they determine, I mean, they are the determined uh, 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 party that will decide whether Israel can have an operation in Gaza or cannot have an operation in Gaza. These are things that are not, not even logical, not acceptable, something that even the, the, the Israeli population will not accept. And that is why I do believe that in those elections, after this crazy year, where a prime minister with no public support, seven seats afterwards, he became six seats, five seats, I stopped even counting, I mean, reducing by itself. But usually when you're a prime minister, you go up, you don't go down. And I will ask Nadav one question. If the government was so good, how come, how come uh, 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 Mr. Bennett does not even represent himself in the coming election? If the government was so good, after one year, they say bye-bye. So let's be reasonable. Let's be serious. I mean, this year was a totally crazy, insane year where you had parties that took ideology, threw it to the ground, where you had left, extreme left, with... with People from the right who are supposed to be right-wing, but they're not anymore, join them. And Israel, I mean, for the first time, in, instead of advancing, went backwards. Now, you spoke about those good figures in economy. With all due respect, it takes more time to ruin this great inheritance they received from the Likud when it came, of course, to the uh, corona crisis with the, with the vaccines, when it came to the growth of uh, Israel in economy, when it came to the strength of Israel, of Israel, and especially the last thing, when President Biden came here, if you remember, a few weeks ago only, and he spoke about the Palestinian state, and he said, that is not something we can deal with right now. Even a democratic president understood that you, you, it's not time for, 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 an, for a Palestinian state, something that we totally oppose in the right, of course, because it's not only something that is not logical, something that should not be happen, it's also dangerous for our kids and for ourselves. So with all due respect, in order to repair all this craziness we had this year, Likud has to be strong and form the coming or the next Well, well and I, I would only, I would just add, uh, and to you, Nadav, that you mentioned that the Arab voter turnout is dropping in part because they're feeling disenfranchised, mm. but many of the Arab parties in the joint list in particular, have focused almost solely on the Palestinians as opposed to the Arab Israelis. Yeah. Is this perhaps a, a, a reason? How, you and, know, how do you and, respond and, to that? And before Nadav answers, another question. No, forget, Nadav, Nadav, forget the right wing. Let's go to the left. I join you right now. I join you. I look at the Arab party and you say right now, I would like them to vote more. Meaning if they vote more, you have more shchade, more ude in the, gov in, the, in the coalition or in the Knesset, not coalition, God forbid. But let me think. Shimon Peres. President, Israel president, wow, he wanted peace a lot, Oslo agreement. Did they go to his funeral? Abraham Accords, did they support? What are we talking about? Not me from the right wing, you from the left, they should be your adver uh, 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 adversaries. And that? Opponents. So let, 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 me say, let me say that uh, what uh, Mr. Bismuth is calling left, or the way he speak about the Arab population, for me, is completely anti-Zionist. And for me, Zionism is going back to the Declaration of Independence. When you see what is written there about Israel will be not only the homeland of the Jewish people, but also an equal uh, country where all citizens are equal, no matter what their faith or what their nationality. And this is what I want. I understand completely that it, Israel should remain the homeland of the Jewish people, but the Arab population, 20% of the population, have to be represented. I think that Ayman Uda is not only focusing on the Palestinian issue, even though I think that focusing on the Palestinian issue is completely a Zionist interest, he's focusing also on the equality of Arabs in Israel, and I think he's a great, great uh, a, a Democrat. Uh, and I really want him to be in the next coalition and definitely in the Knesset. As much as I respect Mansour Abbas, and I'm saying it as someone who's not religious, who's secular, and usually I don't find myself in the same political camp with Did the religious people. you hear what he said about gays, like for Abbas. example? You, you spoke about... Look at you, Abbas, look I think that Abbas, I think one second... But you're in contradiction with I yourself right Abbas, now. You started uh, by saying about gay rights, and you, and, you, and you speak about Ram as a partner. Very, no, you contradict so, yourself. Very, so that, right, because Abbas... 
Abbas, no, Abbas, listen, Abbas is a different kind of Islamist. There are many colors and shades within the Muslim Brotherhood uh, uh, camp. Abbas is someone who lives according to the Sharia as an Islamist. He doesn't, you know, his uh, way of life uh, would not accept gay rights. Unfortunately, I'm saying it as a liberal, but he is not going to force, and he's, he's saying clearly, and this is the way I act. He doesn't want to force his belief on others. He wants to live and let live. He wants Arabs who are Islamists to have the same rights, and Jews, liberal Jews can do whatever they want in terms of, of gay marriage, in terms of whatever they want. I wish our religious bodies were as humanistic as he is. Well, absurd, totally absurd. I'll tell you why. Look, we have reached in 2022 where our... Uh, 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 ultra-Orthodox uh, Jewish parties should take example from the Islamic Brotherhood. And you know what in the international community they think of Islamic Brotherhood parties. Now I want to tell Nadav one thing, because he said before that what I said before about the Arabs in Israel is anti-Zionist. Please, let me give you a quote. Let me give you a quote. Maybe you know who said it, maybe you don't know. But there is someone, I mean, in the 50s, who said this amazing thing. He looked at the Arab population in Israel and he said, you know you, the Arabs of Israel, you have all the rights in this country you have no right over this country. It wasn't Jabotinsky, it wasn't Begin, it wasn't Raziel, it wasn't Netanyahu, it wasn't myself. The one who said it was Professor Ben Sion Dinur, Ministry of Education of Israel, Mapai, left wing. And my God, he did not say nothing right. He said equal rights to the Arab population. They have all the rights in this country. And God forbid, I mean, if anyone doesn't uh, hate Arabs, he has nothing to do with me as a right winger. He has nothing to do with me yet, yet. This is the Jewish state. You cannot have the Islamic Brotherhood being the one that determines your government. You have to understand that. And you're trying to make this, to make idealization of such a party with its ideology. I mean, on one hand, of course, right wings, wow, the way they don't give rights, no liberals, to the gay people. But such a party that has no right whatsoever to gays, this is okay. Be logical, be coherent, and if you can also, vote Likud. <laughs> Nadav? Uh, yeah, well, I, I, uh, I, of course, I completely disagree. By the way, I do believe that uh, Israel should remain um, uh, the national home of the Jewish people, and this is one of the reasons why I cannot understand this map behind you, because in a one-state reality, we will definitely not be a homeland for the Jewish people, or we will not be a democracy. And the way of thinking of the Bibi camp or uh, and his supporters is that there is a contradiction between Judaism and democracy, which I completely disagree. I think that there is no contradiction, and uh, and that is why I believe that the uh, uh, the national um, law, for example, Chokaleom, is completely against Zionism. What? Uh, because it's telling the Arabs not only that you are. Well, um, de facto discriminated, but also the jury you're discriminated, which is um, really with, a, a with shame. With all due, with all due respect, Nadav, the nation state law doesn't, 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 doesn't explicitly say that. After the election. It is saying that it makes Arabic um, a lesser language. It Even there was a court in Carmiel that took already the national, uh, the Choka Leom, and translated it into discriminating acts against Arabs in terms of education. I, one of the reasons why I, I, I do support, you know, the uh, Lapid uh, and uh, this camp, even though I'm not uh, exactly where Lapid is on many issues, is because they want to put equality within the national uh, law, or at least in Israeli basic laws. And right now it's not there, which means the national law is a discriminating law and what it tells the Arabs, and this is what they hear, your second class citizens. By the way, this uh, group is not only saying that to the Arabs, they're also saying it to reform uh, Jews, to, to Jews who are uh, not Orthodox, there are, they will, and they did it in the past and they will do it again, they will treat them as second class Jews. Yeah. And that's why it is a danger that Netanyahu will be a prime minister for Israel, it will be a danger for Israel democracy and for Zionism. Yeah, sure. Why would you like me to respond to that? I mean, for, uh, unfortunately enough, I mean, the Israeli people, you know, the, the, the Israeli people, the Jewish people, if you want, are not that stupid, on the contrary. You look, I mean, you spoke about the polls, you look also at the elections, you see also at the T seats, and you see those people, I mean, who believe that the Chokaleom, the uh, law, the nation, state uh, nation, law. nation state law, I mean, those ones who believe it's a, it's, 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 it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, 
almost racist law and unfair law and, and putting the Arabs outside the society, uh, you see what a minority they are. And by the way, uh, this uh, 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 law passed in the Knesset, and I'm happy it did. And why? I want to tell Nadav something very important. I am someone, I mean, I, I used to serve as an ambassador in an Arabic country for four years, Mauritania, Arabic state, Islamic state, Arab state. And I, I built an hospital over there, and I have so much respect for the population over there. I mean, uh, uh, when I went to school, in, I, my parents sent me from Tel Aviv to, to Jaffa to study in Tabitha school, English school, and then French school, at Collège de Frères, with the little Arab kids from Jaffa, when I did my PhD at the Sorbonne with Camille Mansour. So I have nothing against, and nobody will try to make those right-wingers, I mean, as if they're Arab haters. Yet, yet. In order to appreciate other people, you also start by appreciating yourself. The nation law, the nation law, it's not about being against Minorities, it's about being pro-Jew. This is the Jewish state. I would like to remind him, for example, that Abu Mazen, wow, the tolerant Abu Mazen, the one, I mean, who wants struggles for peace, doesn't accept the idea of a Jewish state. Do I say anything wrong? So for my grandchildren, I need them to know clear, clear, that this is the Jewish state. Now, it has nothing to do, again, as I said before, it has nothing to do against minorities. And what can I do? I mean, according to what Nadab just said, according to what he said right now, Ben Gurion was racist. I mean, only Jews could come to this land. I mean, if there was also Arabs, why also not Arabs could come and live here? Why only Jews? So, with all due respect, what are you trying to rewrite history? It's a tiny state. I mean, what is Israel about? Israel is a country where in Kiryat Shmona you sneeze, you need an handkerchief in Elat. This is the great imperialist country. This is the Jewish state, and we shall protect it, especially in days where some parties, some politicians, think that it should be the state of all its citizens. The answer is no. This is the Jewish state. All right. Well. Unfortunately, I, I, it truly no. make, makes me upset that we have to end it here. Uh, uh, thank you again so much, Boaz Nadav. Thank you so, so much for joining again. I truly appreciate no, it. No, usually, uh, when someone is uh, beginning the conversation, the other one is finishing. I, here, I, um, I, I, Unfortunately, it's, it's, a, ma it's a matter of time. Nadav, I promise you it's yeah. a matter of time. Mm -hmm. Thank you so, so much, though, for joining. I truly sure. do appreciate it. Uh, and everybody at home, thank you for watching. I'm Aaron Forrest. This was ILTV's Insider. Please tune in next time for more on everything Israel and let us know in the comments online if there's a topic that you'd like us to cover next. And finally, for more of the latest updates from Israel, make sure to subscribe to our newsletter at ILTV.tv and sign up for our streaming platform, ILTV+. Thank you so much, and we'll see you soon.